Hey ladies and germs, welcome to Special Notes on Osmosis, a mini video lecture for Mr. McGeehee's ninth grade biology course for Arizona School for the Arts. In this video, we're going to build on the information presented in video 8, specifically dealing with osmosis and something called osmotic pressure. Right, so here is a slide that shows us what happens if you have water on two sides of a semi-permeable membrane. Notice that in the slide, the little box on the left side, you've got a bunch of water molecules on one side and relatively few water molecules on the other side. But the spaces in the membrane are big enough for the water molecules to move across. And so diffusion tells us that those water molecules are going to move from the high concentration on the left to the low concentration on the right until they are in equal proportions, equal concentrations. So switch to the square on the right and now you see you've got the same number of water molecules on each side. Now what these slides don't tell you is what those water molecules are doing. They've established something called a dynamic equilibrium where occasionally water molecules move from one side of the semi-permeable membrane to the other and other water molecules move back. So there's this dynamic equilibrium with water molecules flowing backwards and forwards uh, across that membrane in roughly equal proportions, roughly at the same rate. So the amount of water, the concentration of water on either side of the of water on either side of this, this membrane, it's the same. It's the same on both sides. Now, what if I add something strange, like these hexagonal shaped molecules that have a positive charge? Now what's going to happen? Well, we're going to have a difference in osmotic uh, activity by these water molecules. Instead of flowing backwards and forwards across that membrane, if there's a solute, a particle with a charge, on one side of the membrane, water is going to be inclined to flow toward that concentration of solutes. The reason it does this is really tricky. Notice the size of those charged particles. They're too big to flow across the membrane, so they stay on one side. But remember that water molecules are polar, so if there's a charged particle in solution of water, the water molecules are going to surround it. They're going to be attracted to it. They're going to be stuck. And if they're stuck to those molecules because of the opposite charges that hold them together because of H-bonds, then they can't flow back the way they came. So the result is that you get a net flow of water in this case from the <clears throat> left side of the osmotic barrier to the right side where the where the uh, charged particles are much more water is flowing that way very little water is flowing back and so you get this difference between the amount of water and consequently pressure on the right side of the barrier compared to what's on the left side now let's see what this would look like if we had two containers and we could measure how much water is flowing from one to the other. So here we go. We've got two containers here. On the left side we've got just water. Notice how those water molecules are just diffusing around by themselves in the care container. <clears throat> but in the right container we've got water molecules plus sugar molecules. And sugar molecules have positive and negative charges in them so water molecules are going to be slightly attracted to them. They're going to form H-bonds even if those H-bonds are only temporary. Now if we have an apparatus where those two containers are connected by a bridge with a semi-permeable membrane in it, we know, because of the previous slides, we know that the water molecules are going to flow from the side without the sugar to the side with the sugar. The water is going to flow from the left side of this apparatus to the right side. And when it does, after a certain period of time, you get this situation. Notice how much higher the water level is on the right side now. The right side is higher because more water is on that side. The water is being drawn in to that right side of the container by the presence of those solutes. That causes the water level to rise. Now, one thing that we haven't really dealt with before is something called osmotic pressure. Why does the water level rise at all? Or rather, I guess another way to look at this is why does one side rise while the other side falls? Well, it has to do with this osmotic pressure. Those water molecules on the right side of this apparatus are exerting pr 
pressure and pushing against the atmosphere. So they're pushing against atmospheric pressure. On the other side, on the left side, there's low osmotic pressure, and the atmosphere, the, the pressure of the atmosphere is pushing that water down harder or further than on the right side. On the right side, you've got this higher pressure caused by osmosis that is pushing against the atmosphere, causing that side of the container to rise. Is that clear? Is that clear at all? I'm not sure if it's clear. I feel like it's not clear. Well, here's another example. Here we've got red blood cells, and we've seen a slide like this before. We said, what would happen if we took a red blood cell and we put it into a hypertonic solution, meaning that there's lots and lots of solutes, more solutes in the water outside of the red blood cells than there is inside the red blood cell. Well, we know that water <clears throat> would then rush out of the cell. That means that there's low osmotic pressure inside the red blood cell and high osmotic pressure outside the red blood cell, and that causes the red blood cells to collapse. They shrivel because the pressure outside is pushing in at a greater, with greater force than the pressure inside. On the right side of the slide, you see what happens with a hypotonic solution. If you take a red blood cell and you put it in a solution that has fewer solutes than inside the red blood cell, water is going to rush into the red blood cell. So there's going to be greater pressure inside the red blood cell because water's pushing in, uh, rushing in, and then once it's in there, it pushes on all the surfaces inside the, the red blood cell, kind of like what happens when you add air to a, red uh, to, to a balloon. And eventually, as this picture de depicts, you might actually have the red blood cells burst open. Right? Water rushes in because of all the solutes in the red blood cell. That increases the pressure inside. That causes them to swell. Right? In an isotonic solution, water goes into the cell at the same rate that water comes out of the cell. There's the same pressure inside the cell as outside the cell, and the red blood cell maintains its characteristic sort of disc shape. Did that clear it up? I really hope that cleared it up. Listen, if that didn't clear it up, you need to make sure you ask me about what uh, I was talking about on this video tomorrow in class. We're going to be doing a couple labs with diffusion and osmosis. Hopefully, hopefully that'll give you an idea how this works. Really important. All right, thanks. Bye.